Hello, it's been a while since we've met like this, hasn't it? <laughs> Listen, there's so much going on right now. I decided to bring it back old school and just kind of film a makeup video while I'm watching stuff and showing you stuff. And it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great, guys. If you're a newer viewer of mine, this is the content I <laughs> used to make. The topic that we're covering today is relevant to some of the deep dives I've done, so you're gonna want to hear this. It's intense. Basically, long story short, Monate, which is a huge multi-level marketing company dominating the space for years. I mean, dude, it's going down. It's finally, I think, it's met its end, hopefully. <laughs> and it's interesting because the people that we're talking about today, some of Monate's biggest players. I mean, I think they were all like about to quit anyway, but at least two of them were terminated. They're kind of getting bitter. They're just like in a rage, in a fury, just like terminating people left and right. This has been going on for a few weeks, actually. Uh, the first post that we're going to go over is one that happened a few weeks ago, two weeks ago. So you might have heard that it's been covered already. But what really made me want to talk about all of this is because Angela, the Monet witch, who I did like a whole two hour deep dive on. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever done. I think one of the better ones I've ever done. So if you haven't watched it, definitely go watch it. But Angela left Monet. She was technically terminated, but she was like in the middle of making the decision to leave anyway. Now, before you get too excited, don't be like, yay, hooray, she's finally out of MLM. No, she's not because she's joining Olivita. And apparently, oh, I'm sorry. It's Olive Tree People. Olivita is like the name of it before they launched the MLM version of it, I guess. But they're all like joining olive tree people it's weird they're like all talking mad shit about monate now which is hilarious it's something that we always say happens it's like while they're in their MLMs, they're always, oh no, it's the best company ever. Monate had the whole thing where everyone was like, I'm a lifer, literally calling themselves lifers. Now it's just like, let me tell you about all the shit I put up with while I was in Monate. And it's like, oh, oh, so it's almost like we've been right about literally everything. We were calling you out on everything and you were sitting there calling us haters. But now suddenly, once you're out, it's like, yeah, everything that they were saying is absolutely true. So the first post that I wanna go over over with you guys is the one that I was telling you was like two weeks ago. This is someone named Haley Stell, I believe. I hadn't heard of her until this all happened. She's also one of the ones that went to Olive Tree People, so she's an olive-y, olive oil girl now, but this is the post that she made when she left Monet and she calls it my termination from Monet Global. She's also like a super religious person, just like Angela is. I mean, I guess technically really most MLMers are. So it's gonna get super Jesus-y, but there's some good stuff in here. Some good tea being spilled outside of the Jesus stuff. Anyway, she writes, I've been inundated with questions about my departure from Monet lately. It's not an easy subject to broach, but I feel compelled to share my truth. My journey with Monet has been a profound one, filled with blessings, friendships, and growth. However, recent events have led me down a path I never anticipated. Let me be clear, this wasn't a decision I made willingly. Headquarters' choice to terminate my involvement stemmed from my affiliation with another company in the network marketing space, a violation of Monate's policies. First of all, I know we're not even through the first slide yet, but if she's talking about olive tree people. She can't act like she didn't know she wasn't allowed to do this, right? Like pretty much every MLM says that you're not allowed to be in other MLMs. Some of them are like rank specific. So it's like once you reach a certain rank, then like you're contractually like not allowed to sign on with like, you have to be a Monate lifer, you know? I don't know what Monate's policies are, but generally just about every MLM at one point or another, whether it's the first rank or the highest rank, eventually it'll be like, no, you can't be in other MLMs. So for her to just like feign ignorance and just be like, oh, I joined another MLM. I didn't know I wasn't allowed to do that. It's like, do you people not read your contracts before you sign them? Like, I mean, we all know that they pretty much don't, so. But I don't know. I mean, I feel like this is a pretty well-known fact in MLMs. Yet, despite this being a decision forced upon me, I firmly believe in God guiding our steps. Seven years ago, Monate presented itself to me as an opportunity, one that brought not 
only financial stability, but also a sense of purpose. It was a leap of faith, one I took wholeheartedly. I have been praying about my position at Monet for several months now, battling with my heart, mind, and truthfully, the Holy Spirit, resisting the calling that maybe my future in this industry was not with Monet. I find this interesting, both from like a Christianity perspective, but also just from her being terminated now suddenly. She's like, oh yeah, for the past like several months, I've been like thinking thinking about leaving Mane and and then they just like terminated me so it's like obviously it's God who had them make that decision for me it's like uh it's interesting that now she's like I was gonna leave anyway I don't know I just call BS on this it just sounds like oh no I was totally gonna do this anyway sure Jan but also how come it took God several months to guide this singular step of yours and then it's not even a decision you ended up making <laughs> if God was real if he's just up there like sending you all the signals like leave Monet, leave Monet, and you still weren't doing it. And then he just decided he had to make the decision for you because you were dragging your feet. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I firmly rejected, despite my questions and concerns regarding product formulations, leadership changes, and compensation plan adjustments. Although my pay was declining month over month, we kept hearing from HQ the company was doing better than ever and to lean in and work harder. Despite my uneasiness surrounding those sentiments and thought of no longer working with my team who trusted me when they said yes to this business made me sick, truly. What would they think? How would they feel? These are questions I sat on and prayed about for months? <laughs> She's like, I don't know if I should keep lying to my team or not. Hey God, hey God, help me make the decision to please stop lying to my team. Like, <laughs> it's just so weird. The women who joined me in this journey weren't just business partners, they were family and it's for them for their trust in me that I've agonized over this decision for months. It's not a decision. Ma'am, you literally said this wasn't a decision you made. It was made for you. They terminated you. <laughs> anyway, I poured my heart and soul into being a leader, a mentor, someone they could rely on, but ultimately I had to confront the harsh reality. My belief in Monate's mission was wavering. What did she say? She's been a Monate for seven years. It is so interesting and validating that like honestly in anti-MLM circles and anti-MLM content creation and stuff like you don't really hear much about Mane anymore and that's because like a lot of their top contenders either left, moved on to other companies, it just kind of fell out of the public eye. It definitely wasn't the way that it used to be and so for her to be like oh yeah corporate was basically telling us that they were doing better than they've ever been doing and it's like I can tell you right now just by the sheer number of anti-MLM videos about Mane being made which was not much over the past like year or so like I could have told you that that was a lie. I'm sure plenty of people have called that out. Pl plenty of other anti-MLMers have probably called that out. But why listen to us? Just keep listening to the people who are fucking brainwashing you, dude. Like, it's classic MLM shit. And then, of course, they leave and now she's just like, oh, yeah, I, I knew they weren't doing great. Okay, but you went on Instagram and called us haters for seven years, so. <laughs> cool. I've always been passionate about promoting products that prioritize health and wellness. That's why I initially joined Monet to offer a clean alternative to mainstream formulations. If you're new to the world of what Monet is, basically one of the first controversies that popped up around this company is that people were having severe allergic reactions, literally losing chunks of hair, having like scarring and blisters on their scalp from using this product, but also one of the formulations had, I want to say it was like red kelp or something like that. Something in one of their products that like causes hormonal disruptions in women. And it was basically just like all of these Monet distributors are just like fake news, not real, it's not real, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, fine. Like you have all the hormonal disruptions in your life then that's, that's cool. We'll just be over here using fucking Tresemme, man. Like, but now to hear them be like, oh yeah, there were issues with product formulations and blah, blah. It's like, yeah, we were telling you that. We were telling you that. You didn't want to listen to us but now suddenly now that you're out it's like oh yeah their products were shit it's like okay but you were like going on your instagram and your social media advertising that they were clean products and what have you i know this i look looks crazy i'm gonna fix it okay <laughs> calm down also this foundation is one i haven't used yet it was like i guess going viral i kept getting ads for it it's cover effects i bought it online i think it's gonna be a little too white for me so don't judge me well, i'm gonna fix it <laughs> but anyway i mean the hypocrisy shows and this is why I love watching MLMs crumble like this because like the truth just always comes out and we all get validation from it because it's like, yep, 
we told you, we told you that was happening. You guys chose to ignore it. And now it just really sounds like she's basically saying like, yeah, I knew the products were shit all the time, but I continued to sell them and I continued to grow my team and tell people that they were great. You're just admitting to being a fucking liar so you can make money. And it's like, that's so shitty. God certainly wouldn't approve of that behavior, but all right. But witnessing compromises in ingredient quality and seeing the decline in our compensation plan left me torn. Could I continue to endorse a brand I no longer fully believed in? The answer became clear. I couldn't. And then what should come after that is, and so I quit. Except you didn't, did you? <laughs> you kept going until, quote unquote, God made the decision for you. It's like, what the hell? These people drive me bonkers. But also, it's like, okay, if there were all these changes in the compensation plan and all of these changes in product formulation, like to cut corners, basically, and then meanwhile, corporate's all like, no, we're doing better than ever. It's like, how do you believe that? The signs are all there. If they're cutting corners and like cutting your guys' pay, and stuff all signs point to they're trying to save money because they're losing it you know i guess it's just cognitive dissonance and now as i reflect on my time with monet i can't help but feel a sense of disappointment disappointment not just in the company's trajectory but in the way my departure was handled disappointment in how my leadership is conducting themselves after i trusted them and i was honest to a fault with how i felt let me set the record straight as my previous upline had continued to demonize me to my organization so i am forced to defend my integrity in the face of baseless lies and accusations. I don't know anything about that. I think her upline is Sarah Hill, which is obviously a very big name in Monet, if you didn't know. I don't know what she was running off telling people about this girl, but I'm sure it's just the same old brainwashed shit we always hear from these people. I realize people are going to make assumptions about my departure that may be led by rumors or gossip, but for those of you who know me, you know I have worked relentlessly to be a leader and friend to the women I inspired to join this company, as well as women who were not a part of my organization at all. I'm not a perfect person. I'm not a perfect person. But my shortcomings are not for lack of love and trying, but rather from confronting the battle between my head, heart, and where God was leading me. So I ask that even if you don't understand, you extend grace because my heart was and is in the right place. I hate this from a religious standpoint, dude. Like, if you're gonna dedicate your life to God, but like God is supposedly like sending you all of the signals to be like, you need to go this direction and you're just gonna ignore them? Are you really that? dedicated to God. I mean, to me, it just sounds like you're using your sky daddy as an excuse to be like, this is why this all happened. This bad thing that happened to me that I didn't want to happen to me, it's because it was just God telling me that I should get out and I just wasn't listening. It's like, hey, <laughs> you dedicated your life to this shit. Maybe you should try listening. And then if they're like, oh, well, sometimes God's messages aren't clear. It's like, why not? He's God. <laughs> if it's really that important, why doesn't he step in and be like, hey, make this decision? I mean, maybe you could argue that he did by getting you terminated. I don't fucking know. I want to lead women to the best possible products and opportunity. And when I felt that was no longer Monet, it proposed a question I didn't feel ready for. Beyond my own personal financial risk in starting over, it also presented the risk of losing loved ones. What? Losing loved ones? You mean like your downline? Like people you were like, this is my family. We're a family. It's like, oh, unless you leave Monet and now they don't love you anymore. <laughs> Again, like we always keep saying, transactional relationships absolutely exist in these spaces they are conditional and the moment you're not useful to these people anymore suddenly they don't love you anymore you're gonna start losing loved ones over this and then you gotta ask yourself well were they really loved ones to begin with i don't think so but no don't worry you're just gonna go join olive tree people and find a new olivey oily family right just as god intended for you with all that being said i have nothing but positive things to say about my experience at monet for many years i can no longer in truth say I support the product and business opportunity. I do support the ladies who are still partners and always will to the best of my ability while doing the best to support my family. Okay, regarding ingredients, I hold an important belief that what we apply and consume impacts our overall health and wellness. My confidence in getting involved with Monet was to sell a clean alternative to mainstream formulations. We had a robust no list of ingredients that we would not use in our formulations. So when I began seeing adjustments regarding formulas, the no list becoming the yes list, leaving room for changes to be made, I started asking questions like, why do the USA formulas contain questionable ingredients that our same European counterparts do not? Why is caramel food coloring in our 
our wellness products. Why are we using Red 40 linked to developmental disorders? Yeah, but it's like, this isn't new though. I mean, maybe those like specific instances she's talking about, maybe those were new adjustments, but there's been questions about Monate's ingredients for years. So it's like, don't sit here and act like this is just like a new revelation you had. Like, we've been trying to tell you this for years, dude. This was something I thought would change under pressure, but it didn't. Well, yeah, they couldn't afford it. <laughs> Shocking that the company was going downhill, and so they started cutting corners, and you're like, hey guys, maybe that's why they really terminated you. They're like, this girl's getting way too unrealistic. Our ship is sinking, and we know it. I thought maybe I would just not promote those products, and that felt like a solution. Although, when orders would go through containing those ingredients, I felt a sense of misleading those who trust me since I had promoted this as a clean brand for so long. Yep, definitely misleading. Great job. I knew though that there are women depending on this income and that was enough for me to navigate my sentiments regarding ingredients every time it would come to mind. Oh, so because people were making money off of it, then that makes it all okay. If anything, that should be like, ew, people are making money off of this. That's not okay. But she's just like, yeah, but this misleading marketing is putting food on people's tables. So it's totally fine that it's happening. It's fine. No, it's not. If you have any integrity, the moment you notice this, the moment you realize this for yourself should have been the moment that you were like, whoa, wait, I just had an epiphany. I'm getting out. But no, instead you just kept going with it. Like that's problematic. And that's, pro that speaks to your character that you're someone who's willing to mislead people and continue supporting a brand that misleads people like there's no good reason for that the compensation plan changed shortly after navigating these issues it was an adjustment that sounded like an upgrade of course it sounded like an upgrade they always do that <laughs> any changes to a compensation plan they will always make it sound like oh no guys this is a good thing <laughs> but unfortunately every month the compensation of not just myself but my teammates was in decline and this was not due to lack of working hard. While my personal income was still remarkable and a blessing, I didn't feel confident I could effectively lead women to the paychecks they heard boasted about during our conferences, and in order for me to recruit and effectively mentor, my belief in the business had to be there. Whatever this compensation plan change was, I feel like I remember hearing about it like months ago, so it's like, you still stuck around. This sounds like it should be an easy decision, especially for someone with such an integrity. I felt I fell short as a friend and mentor to my team for many months because I was navigating the potential implications of a decision either way. So again, while this decision was made for me, I firmly believe Jesus opens doors and he closes them. He knows what's best for us even when we don't. Okay, so she needs to stop referring to it as her decision then. <laughs> Sounds like it was Jesus's. <laughs> I truly believe the best is yet to come and I have a peace that surpasses all understanding. I know that God closes one door and opens others that lead to something so much greater. I know that he will remove you from tables that the devil is sitting at. And when you get up from that table, people are talking behind your back. I also believe that when you pray the right people, situations, jobs into your life, the wrong ones will exit. I do not know what the future holds for me and my family, but I have faith in Jesus Christ and that's all I need. I'm thankful for his protection, his, pro okay, blah, 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 blah. That's the end of that. As I was like turning on the camera to record this video, uh, not underscore your underscore hun posted this video on Instagram. Um, and it seems to be like someone who must have been on this girl's team because she mentions Haley in this video, but she's like going off about how Monet treated her and all that stuff. So I want to watch that together also. And I, I should probably share it. Haley sent a three minute voice note to a group of us saying, you know, that people need to be really careful about how they're doing this. Like, you know, talking or even comparing all of it to money is not a marketing tactic we should use because here's the thing, Oliveda is in a completely different tier than money. Like we're so superior. It's like comparing Walmart to Prada. Like pfft, it can't be compared. Okay. So anyways, about how we should just be very classy, you know, all these positive things. And let me tell you something that was so commendable, but now that she's been through what she's been through, they've literally put her in no choice, but to defend herself. Like they've ruined her. So she's got to fix it. Now uh, the message is I cannot keep up with my inbox right now, so bear with me. But I did want to say I've been like grocery shopping and stuff. Um, I did want to say if you can't see what's going on, then you either aren't working your business hard enough or you're not in a high enough rank to feel the effects or you're just not paying attention. Or there's also the possibility, and I say this all with like immense love. I don't say any of this to be ugly because for me, I just don't see how people can't see what's going on. She can't 
see how people can't see what's going on? I mean, now you finally know how us anti-MLMers feel because we've been telling you this shit was going on for so long. I feel like it's funny because I want to say in like my top MLM fails of 2022 video, I want to say I was like, I think 2023 is going to be the end for Mane. Clearly it's 2024 and they're still going, but like 2023, no one really heard anything about Mane anymore. So, you know, maybe my prediction, my timing was a little bit off, but <laughs> in general, like, I mean, I could see that it was coming. I could see that this was happening. Pretty much every anti-MLMer probably agrees with me. Like, yep, we saw this coming from a mile away. So it's just interesting to hear all these people be like, if you can't see what's happening, it's like, yeah, we've been seeing what's been happening for the past however many years. And now you're all finally starting to see it. And unfortunately, despite the fact that they are now finally seeing it for themselves, now they're just joining another MLM. So also, I think it's really funny for her to be like, it's like comparing Walmart to Prada. It's like, oh, okay, so Monet's like Walmart now. Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> now, this is another video that not underscore your underscore hun posted on Instagram about a week ago as I'm filming this. And this is a former Monet market partner talking about how they see the ship also sinking. I'm not sure who this girl is. I'm not sure if she just joined another MLM. I don't know who she is, but she has some interesting things to say. Also, the video is sped up already. I'm not the one editing it like that, so sorry. It's not like on Amazon. Okay, that was the first red flag to me from a consumer standpoint as well as a distributor standpoint. I know there was a little revenue Amazon pool being paid out. I feel like that probably has gone or is gonna go about as well as the founder's share pay. That was the first red flag to me, that no longer is it exclusive and also that they were really in need of extra revenue throwing it up on Amazon. Something else was Stuart's departure, okay? I don't wanna talk about that too much. I adore that man. The day that email came out, I was very much removed from the business side of things already but it felt so abrupt. It just felt like red flag. That's all I'm gonna say about that. It just felt like red flag. Company revenue, 2021 to 2022, was told, we were told that it was like around $800 million, okay? Woohoo, that was like a big deal. Uh, recently, I have seen and heard that on a call, the company leader has said that it's $200 million. I'm assuming, I was not on the call, the whole call. Um, I'm assuming that was in reference to 2023. If that's the case, that's a $600 million drop in revenue. If that was in reference to what 2024 has done so far, I will be shocked and just say, okay, we'll see how that goes. But if not, again, if that's 2023, then that means that out of that $200 million in revenue, half of that is cut in half, 50% paid out to market partners. Um, that only leaves $100 million for product manufacturing, for office space rentals, for paying the entirety of the corporate team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any debt, any loans, whatever. I don't know. I don't know all those details. I'm just making a guess. But that seems not great to me. And I just feel like based on the behavior that I'm seeing from so many of the top earners, based on the adjustments in formula quality, based on the changes in the comp plan, based on the continual downslope of pretty much everything that I can lay my eyes on, uh, I think the ship is sinking. All very interesting. The one thing I did forget about until right now, I was just watching that, is that, yeah, Stuart McMillan left Monate last year, which, like, Stuart McMillan was kind of the face of Monate. Like, he was always speaking at conventions, and, like, he, he was always appearing on the corporate calls and stuff. I forgot all about that, that Stuart McMillan wasn't even part of the executive whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, what this person says, it falls in line with what we knew. I mean, we've known this for a few years, too, because is it the MLM boss babe? Who has it? I think they have it on their profile. Oh, it's this one. This is at a leadership conference in February 2022 showing a slight decline in revenue from 2020 to 2021. <laughs> Now, this animation here was added, but this image without this little animation here was something that got passed around the anti-MLM circles for a long time. <laughs> They're like, look at 2020, 2021, and it's like, uh, yeah, that's not an upward trajectory, dude. It's slightly declining. <laughs> so, but anyway, the rest of this story on the MLM Boss Babes Instagram highlights basically says that, yeah, they only had 300 something million in sales in 2022, which obviously is a big leap down words from 800 million so quite frankly this little graph here probably isn't too far off from the truth but anyway so now we can finally get to Angela the Monet witch Angela has made it easy to watch all of her coverage about her leaving Monet she added a Instagram highlight to her profile so we're just gonna watch through that first of her just talking about it but just a quick little bit of backstory for those of you who don't know first of all again this is the woman I did like a two-hour deep dive one of my favorite videos I've ever done 
them. She is a fascinating creature, or at least was at one point. But so Angela showed up on basically all of our radars when she joined Monet. She was also still a witch, you know. Um, since then, she, well, since she joined Monet, she found God again, quote unquote, and now is just like, witches are evil and of the devil and <laughs> really a, a weird like new age pipeline to Christianity is definitely what she followed. Kind of disappointing, honestly. I mean, she's a disappointment in more ways than th just that. But anyway, let's watch her talk about this. Okay, she posts, oh boy, buckle up. <laughs> oh, we're buckled, Angela. This morning, God told me to read Job 31. I'd never read Job before, so I was a little confused. Girl, you dedicated your life to Jesus like two or three years ago and you haven't read the Bible? <laughs> Okay. If I have walked with falsehood and my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed in a just balance and let God know my integrity. If my step has turned aside from the way and my heart has gone after my eyes, and if any spot has stuck to my hands, then let me sow and another eat and let what grows for me be rooted out. Fine, Angela. But you sowing your seeds in the world of multi-level marketing company is not helping others eat. Let's get that clear because actually people's involvement in multi-level marketing companies causes a lot of people to lose a lot of money. So I don't think that that particular verse was relevant to that. All right. This morning, God told me to draft a goodbye email to the company I spent the last two years of my life making hundreds upon hundreds of thousands for, likely well over a million, but I haven't checked to be certain. I felt in my body that the company had lost sight of God and all integrity. I heard from first-hand accounts of what my friends had seen and experienced. Demonic, several women told me separately. I told my team I was leaving. I put off sending the email, but then we had a play date with a friend and her daughter. I wonder if this all, like, this whole, like, oh, they're not of God anymore. Like, maybe after Stuart McMillan left. Because Stuart McMillan was, like, a money pastor, dude. Like, at all of their conferences and stuff, he would do a sermon. He would be a pastor. <laughs> at the beginning of the year, they would have, like, annual money prayer calls. I covered one of them, I think, like, two years ago. It's really, really interesting, but also extremely culty. And, uh, yeah, Stuart McMillan goes on those two and does a sermon. So then Stuart McMillan leaves, and now all of a sudden they're like, they're not Christian! <laughs> She's not a Christian! No! I don't know. I always felt like Stuart McMillan was a fake Christian, too. This isn't wine. This is an energy drink. It's just in a corksicle to keep it cold. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. <laughs> but, okay, so her timeline so far is, like, I drafted an email, I didn't send it, and then... And I told my team I was gonna leave and then I went to take my daughter on a play day. When my friend and her daughter left, I checked my email and I had been terminated. Okay, so like what happened there? This timeline of events seems really weird. So she told her team she was leaving and then did someone go tattle on her to corporate? Like is that what we're saying? Or, or are you saying that like since they're demonic, the demons knew that you were gonna quit so they just terminated you first? Like is that, <laughs> I'm trying to understand like what the message is here. I immediately started bawling, not because I was surprised, not at all, but because I'm a single mother and it's terrifying to think that my pay is gone just like that. Well, what's really interesting about that is that this quote-unquote business opportunity is always shared with these people in a way that's like, oh, are you a stay-at-home mom and you need some income? Like, stop working for someone else and start working for yourself. Work your own business. And it's like, and we keep saying this, it's not your own business. You do not own a business. You are a 1099 contractor for someone else's company. Now, if this was your own business, you wouldn't be able to be terminated from it, you know? Unless you're Papa John. But that was like a whole other thing. In general, if you want to be like, this is my small business, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, it's not. And this is just the perfect example of what we always say that no, you're not a business owner. You do not own your own business just because you joined an MLM. It doesn't work that way. If you can still be terminated by corporate, then it's not your business. <laughs> and I do feel for her in this way. I mean, kind of. She's made a lot of money off of a lot of people but if I was a single mom and like that's where my money was coming from and suddenly I didn't have it anymore it's like I, I do to that extent have some empathy because it's like you gotta feed your kids you know no conversation no thank you no acknowledgement just termination and that is shitty it, it really is these MLM companies treat their front lines their distributors like shit they really do especially when they realize that you're not worth anything to them anymore. If you're not gonna make them money anymore, they don't care. And it's like in every MLM, they're always like, oh, we get so much recognition in this company and they also like care about our achievements. Actually, Angela was one of the people who did that. She has 
reels of her like holding all her Monet rewards and being like, it feels so good to be recognized, woohoo. And it's like, really? It's all fake. I'm sorry, but you can't just be like, oh, well that was just Monet. No, they're all this way. And it's really annoying because as we know, they just hop to another company and they're like, oh, well I get the recognition I deserve here. It's like right now you do because they're happy that you jumped ship with them. <laughs> Give it another two years and see what happens, dude. She says, you can feel and see when something shifts. And then she posts the screenshot of a message she got. Oh dear Angela, last week having absolutely loved using Monate, I suddenly had a feeling that I shouldn't be using it. I had no reason to feel like this. No explanation. Just a feeling. I canceled my flex ship Monday. Sure. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'm sure there was no other indication to you that you should have been doing that. I'm sure there was nothing else that happened. Had a lot of questions about the ingredients, new allergic reactions being reported, synthetic fragrances when we had been told they were all plant-based and I was hushed in the leaders chat. One multi-milli earner and leader said, blah, blah, who cares? To which I replied, first of all, fuck that person, wow. Most of my audience and market partners are super low tox. I've built my brand for over a decade on no toxic chemicals. So synthetic fragrances are a huge deal to me. I would not put that on my body or promote it because they're hormone disruptors and carcinogens so it's a genuine concern i'm not going to poo poo someone's concern that is valid just because i don't like how someone is sharing their concern leaders don't silence other leaders and all my girls are leaders that's interesting i mean good job standing up for yourself i guess but it's like what do you expect we always call mlms a commercial cult and it's for this reason like angela brings up one valid concern i hate to ever say that angela is right about anything but i'm sure she had valid concerns about the ingredients or whatever because you know we've been having concerns about their ingredients forever so glad that she's finally seeing something's wrong with it but she speaks out and says oh this is something that i'm concerned about and the other leaders say blah blah who cares that is a person whoever that person is they have zero integrity. I wish she would call out who said that, dude. Not that it would make a difference for her downline or whatever. They would probably just make excuses for her. Oh, she didn't mean it like that. She meant- Okay, like, shut up. She then deleted her comments. I left the chat. I knew I was done. Interesting. That leader definitely didn't want anyone seeing that she said that. And then she posts this update that she is a black olive- <laughs> Olive Tree People still cracks me up. Uh, if you didn't know, I did a deep dive on Olive Tree People last year, I think last summer. Honestly, a fascinating company. I, I would absolutely, if you have not watched my deep dive on Olive Tree People, you really should. We're talking like this guy, the CEO of this company is, and I don't say this lightly, he's insane. He believes he can talk to olive trees. He built a tree house in an olive tree and lived in it and says that he was cured of all of his ailments. I think he had like a gastrointestinal issue or something and he's like he says he chugs I think 50 liters of olive oil a year or something like that like wild stuff this dude really loves olives okay they have I think a they raised the prices. I'm pretty sure it's $15,000 now, but it's like a plaque that you can hang on your wall that supposedly is connected to an olive tree on their olive tree grove out in, I forget the name of the island, but it's off the coast of Spain. Majorca? Yeah, that one. So he has an olive tree grove and all of the olive trees have like a transmitter, like a frequency transmitter on them apparently. And if you buy one of the big olives, the $15,000, that's what it's called, the big olive. And they have one called the big hemp too that is connected to a hemp plant. Same thing, $15,000. But they say that it transfers the healing frequencies of the olive tree into your home for only $15,000. Wow. If Angela ends up having a big olive hanging in her house, like if anyone's gonna have one of those, it, it would be her, you know? I've never actually seen a distributor like show it off before. I can't imagine any of these people have enough money to buy it. Like how many of those big olives have they sold, you know? But anyway, it's absurd. Absolute absurdity. Please go watch that deep dive if you haven't already or go watch it again if you need a refresher because it's hilarious absurd insane wild and now these people are all leaving monate to join it anyway the ranks in olive tree people are different colored olives and she is now a black olive <laughs> So stupid, dude. Like, I think it goes up to like gold, platinum, olive, something stupid like that. But yeah, she's a black olive now. $16,000 in three days is what she says on this post, which probably comes from rank advancement bonuses. I'm not sure which rank black olive is. I'm not gonna go look. I don't really care. Angela has a cult following. She actually was a cult leader at one point. Again, that's another video you need to go watch if you haven't. She had a cult where a girl literally died. So yeah. Angela's a cult leader. She has that charisma to like get people 
to follow her anywhere she goes. So whoever was in her Mon 8 downline absolutely followed her to all of Tree People. So in these MLMs, what happens is that everyone has to buy a starter kit and then they end up buying even more products. However big her downline is, all of those people came from Mon 8 and probably just like bought a ton of product. And that's where that $16,000 in three days comes from because she had an influx of people buying the starter kit, buying their first round of products all at the same time, probably spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars in one go, every single one of them. Angela ranks up, gets rank advancement bonuses. I'm not an expert on the Olive Tree People compensation plan. I haven't looked at it for a year, but you know, I'm sure she gets kickbacks every time she recruits somebody. She's gonna make a percentage of every sale that someone in her downline makes. I guarantee that like 90% of that $16,000 that she's made has come from her downline and not from like outside customers. Like it's not like she just started with Olive Tree People now suddenly all these like sales are coming in. Like it's not that. It's because she brought her team over from Mon 8. She's building a team and she's making money by building the team. Oh, I'm stupid. This <laughs> this slide says I've already hit the sixth rank in my new company. Okay, so Black Olive is the sixth rank. Cool. God takes care of his daughters. Well, this is not a sustainable paycheck, Angela. You can only drag your downline with you one time. And I'm sure there'll be others trickling in over the next few weeks, but like this $16,000 is not a paycheck you're going to get every whatever in three days. Every three days you're gonna make $16,000? No, that's just not realistic anyway. Angela, I stopped using Monet a while ago because my hair felt bad. <laughs> Oh, interesting. And I had a bad feeling about it. I actually felt bad because I wasn't ordering from you anymore, but I knew that it was the right choice. Angela says, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Come on, you guys have to know that people were not enjoying their experience with Monet. Like, it's been a widely known thing. People have been losing their hair over Monet for years now. So it's like, don't act like you didn't know that people had bad experiences with the products. Like, come on. Plus they're like stupid expensive. Anyway, so weird too, because I canceled Monet today. Angela says, y'all knew the shift is real. Like I said, that first post that we were all reading, that I was just reading to you guys, was two weeks ago. Like, and, and that kind of went viral in the space, you know? Everyone saw it. Haley leaving was probably a catalyst, but all these people are just kind of like, oh yeah, there, nothing happened that made me realize that I needed to get out. I just needed to get out. I don't know. It's like, huh, that's weird. It's almost like someone who was really big in the company just left. Oh, that's so weird. I have so many messages in my inbox. I have so many questions. I just... I'm feeling so many things. I laid in bed with my daughter as she was napping and I just bawled my eyes out because I'm a single mom and to have worked for a company and like poured my heart and soul into that company and to be completely thrown out like trash, it just, it just proves what I already knew was true about it, period. I feel relief, I feel relief. I think overall, like the feeling that I feel is gratitude and relief to have already known about all of this. I, I already knew, I already knew all of this. Was sure you did. And when you order two products, you get a full size product for free and I'm happy to do recommendations, but right now I'm gonna go outside. Their products are really expensive by the way. Anyway, thank you for sharing. I'm ready to go all in and I haven't even tried the products yet. I love y'all, non-toxic, fastest growing network marketing company in history. No, stop, Angela. Have these people never heard of Black Oxygen Organics? Like if I had to guess, that's definitely up there in the fastest growing MLM company in history. Like definitely grew a lot faster than all of Tree People did. So that right there is Angela just making shit up. She's like, the time is now. Okay, it was launched as an MLM a year ago, but here you go. Like she's getting messages from her people who are like, oh, I'm ready to jump in. And it's like, yeah, this is where that $16,000 came from, Angela. You left and everyone's like, here I come. <laughs> My cult leader's leaving, time to go. That's what happens. It's just, it's not sustainable, but good luck. Anyway, if you want to say the time is now, the time was a year ago when Shauna and what the fuck is that other girl's name? Mary? Yeah, Mary Scott and Shauna joined Olive Tree People last year. I, I think Mary Scott is still in it. What are they in now? What was it? They were number 10 in my top MLM fails of last year. Oh, I think they're in Amari. Mm. I haven't tried to catch up with them since I made that video, so I maybe they're in a new MLM now. I don't know, but this was all last year, dude. People were like jumping ship into this new opportunity. It's a year old now, which I guess you could be like, oh, it's still a baby company. Like I guess in comparison to like Arbonne or 
Mary Kay or something, like, yeah, I guess it's a newer company, but, like, it's been an MLM for a year. What does this mean for you income-wise? How does it compare to Monate's pay? And she says double Monate's. And then she adds more than double. And you can get rank bonuses every single quarter, not once. That's something I'd have to look into. I'd have to compare the compensation plans, but maybe, like, in Monate, if you get 15% commission on sales, then maybe all of Tree People is 30. Maybe that's what she's saying. I don't know. How are you feeling after the betrayal? <laughs> after the betrayal? Because I have to say, you look great and seem lighter. She says, I feel such relief. Wow, Angela, great job. <laughs> no weapon formed against you will prosper. You are his. And then she sends a message of something she sent at one time. Someone hit my Monate car. Yet another sign it was done. And she says, as soon as my car was hit head on, I knew Monate was over for me. I texted my two god girlies and told them. Oh yeah, yeah, God put you in a car accident, just as a sign for you. Yeah, I don't know, maybe she wasn't in the car. Yeah, she got the car bonus and then it got totaled. And she's like, I think this means Mane is done for me. <laughs> this is God telling me. Does this mean you won't get compensated by M for your existing customers and team? She says, I don't get a penny for the 2.5 years. Wait, what? You've been getting paid by them for the past two and a half years. Like, it's not like they're just gonna take that money back. What are you talking about? I can only assume how much I've made them based on what we are paid and since we made 15% commissions I've earned well over six figures so it must be over a million. What hair care will we use now? And she says I'm trying it out this week. I guess they have a hair care line. Yeah Olive Tree People has a lot of lines of products and they're all like 80, 100 bucks. Like they're expensive so good luck selling that to people. If you took the quiz DM me so I can help you choose a few products or just trust your gut and grab a few to start because apparently y'all know how to trust intuition better than me. We don't have flash sales, period. Yeah, Monet always had flash sales. <laughs> I don't know, just wait, dude. Like, Olive Tree people will start having flash sales eventually, but Monet would have them, like, once a month or something, and it would always be, like, they would get paid on a Friday, and then it'd be, like, hey, Friday flash sale, and then they would just, like, go spend their paycheck that they just got from Monet on more Monet products, so total scam. Absolute scam. I mean, most MLMs don't really do that. I guess a few of them do. Monet definitely did. You know what, though? I bet. I freaking bet. That that when those flash sales went on, Angela was posting about them and telling people to go buy up all this shit. This person says literally everything is sold out. Everything is sold out? This has to be because like everyone is leaving Monet and joining Olive Tree people and there's like an influx of new people and they're just like, oh, what do we do? <laughs> Canceled my shit with them three weeks ago because my hair is legit falling out in chunks. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, this is not new. This has been happening. Angela says, y'all have a lot of questions and so do I. There's been no transparency about the changes. It all started for me when one of my besties told me her hair started to fall out about a month ago. Since then, I've asked questions and they're all vaguely answered or silenced. I will give you every single detail I know. I've gotten probably 20 to 30 messages from customers who had uh, adverse reactions and then things went down in chats and that's when I knew I was done. Oh, oh, so when people started giving you pushback in the leaders chat, that that's when you knew where you were done, but not when 30 people tell you their hair is falling out. No, you just keep pushing, keep chugging along. Do these people hear themselves? They're like, I don't care about other people, but once people start like being mean to me, then it's time to go. Yikes. Unclear ingredient changes, 0% commission on sales. Wait, what? Really? That can't be a thing. Is that really what they changed their compensation plan to? No way. And inside details from trusted Christian friends who left also. Any adverse reactions you have, report them. I can't do anything. Yeah, she's right about that. Please report them. <laughs> Everything is selling out because I told you we're the fastest growing network company of the history of the world. No, you're, no, it's not. Angela, you're gonna love it here at OTP. Congrats. As she says, the people, the support, the community, the transparency, the products, the company. We have a prayer chat, y'all. Prayer calls every Friday. All Oh my god. Seriously though? Say it's a cult without saying it's a cult, dude. Like, you're talking about olive tree extract and olive oil. You guys are in a company that sells olive shit, and now you're like, it's all Christian. Like, all <laughs> we're a Christian company. It's like, you're selling olive tree shit. Anyway, all organic, all bioactive. No one is running after millions and compromising their integrity. So, chef's kiss. No one is running after millions? Isn't isn't that the point of being in an MLM? Like, <laughs> Angela has been running after millions her whole freaking life, dude. <laughs> Are you worried the same thing will happen with this new network marketing? My trust would be low. And she says, no, every MLM is the same. We all say that all the time. And we always get those comments from angry people in MLM.
MLM's like, well, my MLM's not like that. Not my MLM, not my MLM. And then it always ends up being their MLM. Like, they're all the same. You can sit there and say, oh, well, there are some MLM's that are good. No, there's not. The business model is made for people to fail. It is designed so that 99% of people will not see a profit and so that the one top 1% can run off with all the money. That's that is the way these compensation plans are designed. Not everybody can win. There's always going to be losers. Now Angela has built enough of a following. She'll probably be fine, but the people who join her now probably are not going to be so lucky. The owner is so passionate about his olive trees. Yes, that's what like what I told you. He lived in an olive tree. <laughs> Dude's wild. He's just an olive farmer who wants to spread the power of the olive leaf extract. Yeah, and he's a nut job. You left that part out too. But so is Angela. So I keep hearing about ingredient changes with Monet, but my biggest thing is why isn't corporate saying anything to explain themselves? And she says, great question. They won't because that would require that they admit that their sales are down, admit that they're not making anywhere near as much money as they were making a few years ago and that they've been lying the whole time. So they're not going to answer that question. They're not going to defend themselves or explain themselves. They're not going to do that because they have too much pride for that. Anyway, so that's all that Angela has posted so far. Now, one last thing. Thank you to Turd Girl. I think it's Turd Girl 1 is her Instagram handle. She sent me the full Zoom replay of... She, she did a Zoom call telling us all about this new Olivey expedition that she's going on. So we're gonna watch it together. That's the good thing about me doing this. I was thinking about doing this as a live, but it's 26 minutes long, so when there's pauses and, like, irrelevant stuff, I guess, I can cut it out. That's the good part about me doing this as a video. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so my incredible upline Amanda, my friend and upline Amanda is going to come on as soon as she finishes Pilates. I visited Amanda. I went to her house um, back in like October and I used her skincare because my skin was really suffering. My skin was like, I had all these broken capillaries and my skin was just really old looking and wrinkled. I mean, I'm 40 this year, <laughs> which is fine. Monet had a skincare line, if you guys didn't know. Angela was always, first of all, posting about how young she looked and how, how great these skincare products made her look. She would always put a filter on when she would make these Instagram stories and these reels and stuff. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I even called that out in the deep dive I made about her. Like she's very clearly using filters. And now all of a sudden she's like, oh yeah, well, my skin was just looking so wrinkly and it was looking so blah, blah, blah. I'm 40 years old. It's like, okay, so sounds like everything you said about Monate skincare being anti-aging and being so great for your skin was just a lie then. So it's like, how can you trust anything that Angela says? How can anyone trust anything that this woman says? She's sitting here literally telling you that she was lying for the past two and a half years about how great these products were that she was selling and they weren't even that great. She didn't even like them. But I used her skincare and I was completely, I was like, okay, this stuff is great. So I ordered it. I signed up as a distributor, even though I had no intention to sell. So I've been using these products over the last few months. You guys, my skin, like I have had broken capillaries heal themselves. I had this giant pore in the middle of my forehead for years. Actually, when I lived in here in this house four years ago, I went to um, a plastic surgeon's office because I had this giant pore and there was like a rock stuck in it and it wouldn't heal. And it has, look, it is completely gone. I don't know if you can see, but it was there for years and it's completely gone. So anyway, I told Amanda, Okay, well, I want to know more about the company because some things have been going on in my, you know, last company that I just didn't feel good about, which I'm not going to talk about on this call. I'm happy to talk about it later. So Amanda told me that this company, you guys, is growing faster than doTERRA grew in their first year. This is the fastest growing network marketing company in the history of America. Wait, I thought you said in the history of the world. So her reasoning for this company is growing faster than doTERRA did their first year. So that means that it's growing faster than every MLM ever. It's like, if it's faster than doTERRA, it's faster than everyone. So it's like that logic isn't logicking, but okay. In January, it was 100 percent growth. In February, it was over a hundred percent. March was 200% growth. And it's just gone up from there. We have had at least a hundred percent growth since we've started. And this is a brand new company. It's not even a year old. So what does that mean? So in every company, when you get started, you have the option when the company gets started, you have the option of securing founder shares. Founder shares oh, means God. you're one of the first people to get in. And that means that for life, 
you get a percentage of the company's revenue. So I'll give you an example. I have an ex and he started at Uber when there were 10 employees and he got founder shares in Uber and those founder shares are worth like $50 a share. So he has over $50 million in this um, stock that he can take out at any time. So he can, he took out some to buy a sailboat. Okay. But, and I, I don't know for sure how this works with olive tree people, but if it's like any other founder shares in any other MLM, it basically works. Like it's, it's not a traditional stock founder shares in like for Monate, for example, Monate had founder shares. And basically what it was, was they were just like, oh yeah, every month we're going to take out a percentage of our revenue for the entire month and divvy it out to people who we've given founder shares to. That's basically how it works. It's like, it's not like you own a part of the company. You don't own a physical like share. Well, it wouldn't be physical. You know what I mean? You wouldn't own a share. The issue with MLMs here is that once you leave the company, it's not like you still continue to get founder shares. If you're not a distributor with them anymore, you're not going to get those. So right now the founder shares are worth $4 each. And when you hit founders, you get a hundred thousand shares. They are projected to go to $12 this year. That's $1.2 million. And Amanda, my upline, just hit founders in a month and a half. There is a window of opportunity to join every company. And so I joined Monate in 2021, at the end of 2021. And that window had already closed. Okay, but she also, like, she's going to say that, but she also, when she joined Monate, she got like all these rewards for being like, I think she was number one in sales or team growth or something like that it, within the first few months of her being in Monet. So it's like, okay, if the window's already closed, then how did you end up being number one in the company? You know what I mean? What she's saying, like she's leaving out details to make this seem like it's this crazy opportunity that it's just not like it, it really isn't and what she's saying about like oh yeah 1.5 million dollars what is that per month per year like what it, it's unrealistic it's unsustainable this company cannot pay you that much how many people have the founder shares like how likely is it that you're gonna get to that level you know she's like oh my my upline got to there in a few months it's like okay well you're her downline and you're bringing in a whole new leg to her team dude so you know what angela will probably make it to whatever this founder rank is because she's Angela, but all of her downline most likely will not. Only people who are making money are people who joined prior to that time. Did you not make money in Monet? Pretty sure you did. She literally said in those stories, she's like, oh, I was making six figures with Monet. Okay, so you were making money and you said that you joined outside of that window. You were number one in the company for sales or some shit and you made six figures and you were able to do that joining outside of that window. Sounds pretty fishy to me, Angela. It sounds like you're leaving out a lot of details that you just don't want people to know. The only people who are making money are people who joined prior to that window. And the window right now with this company, it's called Olive Tree People, Oliveda. The window is right now. So we are seeing girls coming in, having no experience in network marketing. I was on a call last night with a girl who has no experience in network marketing and she hit founders. Oh, also when you hit founders, I forgot this huge piece. You get um, into the founders pool, which is 1% of the company's revenue split amongst the founders for life. Okay, so no, for life, as long as you're in the company. Um, okay, so she's saying there's founder shares and a founder pool. Are they two separate things? I have to look this up now. Oh my God, it is publicly traded. <gasps> so it's actually Olivita International. So it's complicated. Olivita is like, if it's a tree, let's say that olive tree people is an olive tree and the trunk of the tree is Olivita. That's like the parent company. And then it branches off into olive tree people. Olivita is publicly traded. Current stock price is $2 and 82 cents. So what she's saying is they will give you, when you hit a certain rank, they will give you Oh my God, a hundred thousand. Um, okay, listen, she just said, oh, they're worth $4 each. I just checked and like their stock is $2 and 83 cents. So maybe it was $4 on the day she joined it, like had a spike and now it's going back down. Like, I don't know, but then she says, okay, so a hundred thousand, that's $283,000 in shares that they just give you? There's gotta be some kind of stipulation to that, dude. That's 
wild. And so she's saying that, oh, well, those stocks are just gonna go up. It's gonna be $12 by the end of the year. So you, if you hit founder, you're gonna get $1.2 million, which in theory sounds great. I'm not sure. I can't figure out which rank gets those shares. It must be a really high rank because they're not just gonna give out 100,000 shares to just anybody. Like it's gotta be someone who really gets up there. If they are traditional shares, like in the stock market and you own them, like you can sell them at any time. I don't know, this just sounds sketchy to me. I call bullshit, man. Like, there's there's something she's leaving out here. But again, like I've been saying, she's been leaving out a bunch of other details so far in the Zoom call. Or life. And again, those shares are worth $4 each, and this year it's projected they're going to be worth 12 This is like getting in doTERRA in their first year. This is like getting in money in the first year. So right now, the only people that can sell are in America. This company has just started in America and it is going to expand. With a lot of the Monate products, I didn't feel comfortable with Eve playing with them, like the damage repair line and like some things. I just didn't want Eve playing with them because I wasn't sure of exactly what was in them. She plays with my Oliveda. She puts it in her mouth and I totally do not even mind. Guess who's coming on? Amanda's going to come on. Sorry, I'm like, don't know much about the products, but Amanda does. I know I told them you were in Pilates. Oh, oh my God. That girl is the one that the video we watched earlier. Oh my God. It's all coming full circle now. <laughs> First of all, I'm talking about the products. I just want you to tell us why these products are different. And we have a lot of estheticians that are going to be listening to this call who are in work right now. So can you tell me Tell us about the products. Sorry, yeah. now bear with me. I'm driving. Okay, first of all, can we not do this while we're driving? So this girl used to be with Mane. She joined All Tree People and then recruited Angela. That's what I'm gathering here. Now, I'll say this about all of Ida's products. Unless there's something really super fishy going on behind the scenes, I do truly believe that the products are what they say they are. And maybe that's just because the founder, like, I do truly believe that this man loves olives. <laughs> is it kind of a grift? Yeah, I do think this guy is a little cuckoo. But there is scientific evidence to say that olive oil, olive extracts and things like that do have health benefits. So I'm sure they're gonna come up with some wild statistics and stuff and, and say that, oh, it'll treat cancer, it'll treat, you know, I'm sure that stuff is coming. The, they always do this for every product. It's always, oh, it'll treat cancer. <laughs> they always do this shit until that wild stuff starts happening. I don't know. Although, like I was mentioning before, the founder, CEO or whatever of, of Olive Tree People did say that like living in an olive tree and bathing in olive Olive oil and drinking olive oil and just like living an olivey lifestyle cured his medical ailments and stuff. So I mean, maybe. Although I, there is something to be said for consuming pure olive oil. Like maybe it does help with gastrointestinal upset. You know, I I don't know. But for the most part, I would say that if I saw Olivita in a med spa, like I wouldn't be afraid of it. It wouldn't be like with Monate where I'd be like, ooh, you're selling that. I wouldn't want to support a spa that's selling olive. Olivita, olive tree people, because I'm like, oh god, you're an MLM kind of guy. But like, the products themselves, so far, in my opinion, I don't see an issue with them. I haven't heard of any adverse reactions. Are they overpriced? Hell yeah, they are. Of course they are. It's an MLM. It has to be. Especially if they're paying out the amount of money that Angela says they are. That being said, though, so far, I don't see an issue with the products. It's more so the compensation plan, the business model, that kind of stuff. And obviously, it's being picked up by some of the world's most predatory marketers. So that's an issue. I'm going to be cutting out all of the stuff of this girl talking up the products. This video is not to sell you on the opportunity. I just want to debunk the shit they say about the compensation plan and the business model and stuff like that. Again, I'm sure the products are fine. Is she qualified to speak on this? Probably not. She's probably just regurgitating stuff that she's been told and that she's read on their website and whatever. I'm not here to sell you on the product. I'm here to talk shit about <laughs> multi-level marketing. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to be cutting a lot of this part out. And it's huge for immune boosting, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer properties. Oh I know we're not allowed to make medical claims. Dude, wait, hold on. <laughs> I called it, didn't I? <laughs> I haven't watched this. Okay, never mind. I just take back everything I say about like, oh no, I'm sure it does all the things that they say. It oh no, now all of a sudden it's anti-cancer. Oh my God. Can we not? Can, can we just have one MLM that doesn't claim to cure cancer? <laughs> this is such a dangerous message. These people cannot be going around saying this shit. I cannot stand these people. I cannot stand these people. Like for me, when my Hashimoto's is flared, I have a really bad hair loss. Um, my nails are really brittle. 
everything has changed since I've been on these internals. Like genuinely, I take them every single day. I also do a shot of our olive oil. Olive oil and thyroid has a lot of benefits. Good olive oil, not the stuff you can find in the grocery stores. Now I was at a point where, when was it? I think July or August, when I got my blood work done, my concierge doctor was very much like, you're probably going to have to get your thyroid removed. Like it's almost non-existent. My blood work came back perfect a month ago, literally perfect. Now I am on a natural thyroid medication. It's like na uh, nature thyroid, armor thyroid. It's the same thing, but still my numbers were improving. Okay, so what she's saying is I have a thyroid issue. I am on medication for the thyroid issue, but my perfect blood numbers is probably due to this olive oil I've been taking and not the actual treatments that I've been prescribed. <laughs> like, no, I think it might be the thyroid medication that's helping. We do not have flash sales the way that some of you guys are used to it. We do not have flash sales every day. You are going to pay for these products, but as um, one of y'all said they're not crazy expensive, like a lot of the stuff we get at plastic surgeon's office. <laughs> well, and I want to talk, I want to piggyback on that and talk about how long they last because it is not bait, like water-based. Um, and if I know some people are probably going to be like, well, I see water in some of the ingredients. And I just have to know if you keep reading on the website, he does explain that plants contain water. You cannot remove the water from plants. It's just misleading to call it waterless skincare. I think that's what the point is that we were trying to make. When I say that this stuff is expensive and these people are sitting here like, oh, it's not crazy expensive. Like, I guess if you're comparing it to something you buy in a plastic surgeon's office, like, fine, sure. I, I don't know how much that stuff is, but... For example, corrective face cream, $94.95. Anti-wrinkle cream, $65.95. Corrective eye elixir, $89.95. And if you're buying multiple of these products, that's hundreds of dollars, dude. If not thousands, if you're buying a lot of them. It's just, it's so much money. It is so much money. And it probably does not have to be that expensive. And that's so funny you talked about. So we say it's waterless beauty, but water is obviously on the ingredient label. And here's the other thing, you guys, this company is so transparent. Okay, but the whole point is that you're calling it waterless skincare while also putting water as the number one ingredient on some of your products. So that's where it's it's misleading. Like obviously, I think we all know that yeah, there's gonna be like water in one way or another. It's like the essence of life basically. But like the point is that you guys are marketing it as waterless and then you look at the ingredients and there's water in there. So it's like, it's just misleading. Most of you guys wanna know about this opportunity. So I've already given you a little bit of the rundown, Amanda, just to let you know, I've told them like this company is growing faster than doTERRA. We've grown 200% month over month since um, March. Uh -huh. We're now we the fastest growing network marketing company in history <laughs> right now. Bullshit. Yeah, it is I, I, wild. And you guys in total transparency with you, I was going to wait until May 1st because that is when I technically lose my rank and I can't be terminated from my current company. You don't have a day to wait. You don't have a day to wait because here's the thing. I have people that are my friends that joined Amanda because I wasn't sharing about it yet. I sat back and watched since August and that is my biggest regret ever. Let me, let me just explain this to you. So don't think, just jump in. <laughs> is basically what they're saying. And then they say this shit all the time. I look at the girls who, like I have a friend, I have a friend who got into, into doTERRA the year they started. And she makes like almost a million dollars passively in a month. And I'm not saying that this is gonna happen for us. I'm not saying any of that, but I am telling you that I have used, I have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on lasers and plastic surgeon office skincare. I have used everything natural under the sun. It's interesting that she says that, but like for the past two and a half years, she's been saying she's just been using Monet. Oh, but no, you're getting laser treatments and like buying skincare from plastic surgeons while also being like, Monet skincare is so great. All she's saying here is I'm lying. I've been lying and I'm still gonna keep lying. Nothing has touched my skin the way that this has. And it is, the opportunity is now. And I just wanna say that to you, not to give you like panic, but also I was on a call last night, which. I was on an opportunity call last night with a girl who has zero experience in network marketing company. And she hit the top of this company. This company is not even a year old. Okay. So you are at, when we say ground floor, the, the opportunity right now, if you, and it's not just, if you join, if you join and if you truly go in and you 
you do this business, which you have Amanda, Amanda hit the founders shares yesterday in a month and a half. You have Amanda, you have me. I like you guys, you can do this if you truly decide to work and you guys, every single woman, you know, is going to be using these products. It's going viral. Every time someone's like, Oh, are you using Oliveda yet? Have you heard of Oliveda? It's, it's insane how fast it's growing. First, I do want to say that if these products are so amazing and so great, you're going to eventually see some knockoffs coming up. And I mean, I say knockoffs, they're probably going to be similar quality, but like just for much, much less, and not from a multi-level marketing company. They'll probably come out soon. If, if this is successful, other companies are going to jump on this idea. So I'm just going to wait for that. <laughs> When Angela says every woman you know is gonna be using the skincare, it's like, oh yeah, only women care about skincare, that's silly. No, dude, listen, there's gonna be alternatives and it's gonna be cheaper. No, I, I will never use Olavita because it's an MLM. If there is an alternative that's really, really great and helping people in the same way, then I'll jump on that, sure. But for Angela to be like, this is gonna be so big that everyone's gonna be using it. No, no. <laughs> and if the anti-MLM movement, like its history is any indicator of how this is gonna go, if you start seeing Olivita popping up everywhere, if it's gonna start popping up in, I don't know, Sephora and Ulta and stuff, just like, kind of like how Beauty Counter did, uh, we're gonna have something to say about it. There's going to be a very large outcry to these companies. Sephora and Ulta have already experienced it from us, and those products did not do very well when they had Beauty Counter in there, from what I understand. You really, you can't fight against the <laughs> public outcry that people have against MLMs. You just can't. So, no, that will never happen, Angela. I've never been a part of so much support. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I was with my previous company, I actually had a really good upline. Like, I can't complain. And anyway, there are things she did that I won't do. Um, like, I won't guilt trip people if they can't attend an evening call because they want to be with their family instead. Like, family comes first for me. Sounds like your upline wasn't that great then. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's going to take work, like with anything. But when it comes to resources and uplines... You have so many people to not only help you, but hold your hand and make sure you're successful. If you're like, hey, I have a goal, you have four to five people that are there making sure you hit your goal, that are figuring out a way to help you at any chance possible. And when I tell you we have every resource available under the sun, you will have everything everything you know what this makes me think about is that like how money there was like a team chat that got leaked at one point where all of the leaders there was like a leaders chat and someone was like oh i need to get this many sales to be able to rank up or whatever and so everyone in the team was like i'll buy an oil from you i'll buy this from you so that you get all these sales and you rank up if everyone from money especially people who were doing that if they all join this company they're all gonna do the same thing she's like they're not gonna guilt trip people they're not gonna do it's like oh if you were in Monet and now everyone from Monet is in Olive Tree people, it's going to be the same shit. They're the same people. They didn't change just because they switched companies. It's still going to be the same shit. My direct upline, Sable, she doesn't have a history in network marketing. She joined June 28th, launched her business in July, and she's hitting the very top rank this month. And... That is really, really huge that she's somebody like she doesn't have a big following. She doesn't like she's not a social seller. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a really neat place to be at. So she's not a social seller, but she seemed to recruit plenty of people. So she must be a social recruiter, <laughs> which really ultimately is how you're going to wind up at the top of these companies anyway. You're not going to get there just by selling product. You have to build a team. You're not going to rank up without a team. So even if she's not great at selling, she's good at recruiting, which ends up translating to other people selling for her or, you know, them just buying the starter kit because that really technically counts as a sale in these companies too. It sounds like your upline who's about to hit the top rank of the company is just really good at recruiting. These women are of God. We have prayer chats. We have women who truly love Jesus, not just people who say it and not just people who throw, you know, God out there. Okay. So are people, people in Monet aren't real Christians then? Is that what you're saying? People who actually love God are in Olive Tree people. People in Monet, they're just fake God lovers. It's like, dude. Okay, Angela. People who genuinely live it like these women want us to succeed. So, um, I want to talk about your next steps and then we're going to hop off and you can send me any messages you have. It's exciting. It's scary. I'm moving. I'm a single mom. Like if we can do it, you guys, you can do it too. And I want to thank you for taking time to be on today. And Amanda, thanks for taking time to be on today as well.
Um, and you guys, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Have the best day ever. And God bless y'all. Bye. Interesting. Okay. Well, guys, that's all I have for you right now. Actually, maybe maybe we should see if uh, Angela has posted anything before we hop off. She's posting stuff about Jesus, uh, lots of Bible verses. Nothing else really uh, coming from Angela, but interesting. All right. Well, cool. Hey, guys, if you made it to the end of this video, Thank you for being here. Before we end here, of course, I have to thank my patrons and my members, you guys. The list of people I'm about to name off are my financial supporters. They get access to our private Discord server. We have things like a postcard club, sometimes even more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie, or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my YouTube memberships. Just whatever platform you want to join on works for me if it works for you. So with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to... Hula Chowdown, Jacqueline Nutton, Kessie Drew, KJ Barnes, Leanne, Sarah Simi, Caroline Reed, Daniel Urena, Maddie Darley, Ray, Just Mark, AJC, Martine Hubert, Love to Be Evil, Amber Price, Baby Pink Pearl, Alice Wagner, LaSalle Story, Mother Dragon 82, Fallon Lowry, Hannah, Jessica Billhart, Emion, and Auntie Lou, and to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thank you for just making it to the end of this video because YouTube loves watch time and it loves it when you just sit here and watch stuff so <laughs> i appreciate it so much i don't know when i'm gonna see you next maybe if there's other wild and wacky stuff maybe we'll do a, a live stream if more things happen here unless there's a lot of it then i'll make a follow-up video other than that i guess i'll just see you when i see you okay toodaloo goodbye